a lot of the scientific recommendations uh, started to shift too in that we were battling a respiratory virus, right? And how is a respiratory virus primarily transmitted? Well, through the air, of course. Um, the surfaces as well, but, but you know, the primary transmission of SARS-CoV-2 that leads to COVID-19 is, of course, through the air. So we uh, really quickly became experts on, on indoor air filtration and, and hired some really smart folks and consulted with, you know, the various state, a state agencies and uh, trade groups and things like that and has spent months and months and months and months evaluating hundreds of different air purifiers, air scrubbers, uh, indoor air quality monitors, some good, some terrible, <laughs> and some just okay. And really what's floated to the top is a small, very small group of products that, uh, that we developed into a program that we call Micron Safe Air. Uh, the Micron Safe moniker is something that we use internally to talk a lot about you know, making a space Micron Safe. So what Micron Safe Air is, is a collection of all these products. So basically we did the work so that you don't have to. And um, of course, they're all available for purchase through us, but Really what we're here to educate you about today is technology and some of the differences in these terminologies so that you can look at your own situation for your small business and make an educated decision for yourself right on what products make sense for you guys. And, and if those are through us, that's great. And if they're not, that's fine too. We just wanted to be able to spend some time with you today to share some of the knowledge that we've learned and, um, and, and share with you some really great resources about how you can read up on that topic a little bit more yourself. Uh, without doing it on Facebook or Instagram, uh, please don't. <laughs> but doing it with, uh, you know, with the right folks. So with that said, let's dive into kind of the, the first headline, which is what is the difference between an air scrubber and an air filter, or uh, said differently, a mechanical or le an electronic air cleaning device. Um, so before we say anything, uh, this all everything we're going to talk about today. Uh, Carolina will send you a link at the end. So there's uh, all of the resources that we're pulling from. Um, all of the information we're presenting to you today is information that is available online. Uh, it's also information that is a lot of these terms that I'm going to use today and things like that are were coined by the state of California, by the Department of Environmental Regulation and the California Air Resource Board. So we didn't make, this isn't Micron speak. We didn't make this up. This is, uh, you know, a lot of research done with ASHRAE, which ASHRAE is the trade association for HVAC professionals and with the California Air Resource Board. So those links will all be provided to you. So of course, take notes uh, as, as you uh, as you see fit. And if we say anything that's interesting to you, then that's great. Then we've done our job. But uh, everything will be provided to you in link format so that you can uh, do some independent reading on your own. So mechanical air purifier, what is that? So as the state defines it, an air cleaner that's listed as mechanical is one that uses physical filtration, such as a pleat or HEPA style filter, HEPA style filter and does not generate ozone or ions. So said differently, that's a standard air filter. And how do those work? They pull air in from outside, it has to pass through the filter. And when it passes through that filter, it's gonna filter out a certain level of any respiratory pathogens, viruses, particles, things of that nature. Depending on the technology that's being used and depending on the grade of that filter is going to let you know how efficient and effective that filter is going to be. And we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. An electronic air cleaner, as defined by the state of California, is capable of generating small amounts of ozone, very, very small amounts. We'll talk about ozone in a second. But it's been tested to uh, include any ionizers, electric precipitators, PCOs, hydroxyl generators, or devices with a UV light component. And UV light is something we're going to talk about in depth, too, and other electronic air cleaning technologies. So when we talk about mechanical air filtration versus electronic air scrubbing, there you go. And again, that's that's the California Air Resource Board's definition. Uh, they call it mechanical and electronic. We call it air filtering and air scrubbing because it's easier to understand. And uh, in the industry, that's more commonly how it's referred to. So with that said, there are a lot of different options as far as mechanical and electronic air filtration. And for you, it just depends on what your priorities are in your space, right? And, you know, we could, of course, and as we get into the breakout rooms, we'll answer some individual one-off questions. Um, you know, my job here at the top of the call is just to, to walk you through a little bit what the differences are and talk about kind of how they're being used as a category. And then we can talk in the breakout rooms about specific use cases. But basically, uh, 
it's dealer's choice, really, right? So as far as one's not better than the other, uh, it really just depends on what your priorities are. In the South Bay, you know, when we met with Kelly in Carolina a few weeks ago, you know, Kelly brought up a good point, too. A lot of folks are concerned about mold, right? So if you have a concern about mold, because we live by the ocean, uh, an, air, an electronic air scrubber may actually be better for you because these hydroxyls that it's going to generate and release into the air are going to help combat mold as well. We've done some additional research on that. So um, really, when we talk about that, generally speaking, the number one question that we get is windows open, windows closed. What's better, right? Because is the air inside my house gross? Is the air outside of my house gross? <laughs> you know, how do we how do we deal with that? And Really, what the state says and what uh, what the industry recommendation is, typically speaking, the air outside of your home is always going to be cleaner than the air inside of your home, unless there's what's defined by the state as an outdoor pollution episode. Now, what is an outdoor pollution episode? The biggest one that we see here in Southern California is a wildfire, right? So if there is something going on, uh, the Chevron plant's firing. Uh, I know they're our sponsor. Hey, guys. Um, and, you know, if, if there's any type of... Uh, wildfire going on, if there's any type of uh, uh, a high, it's a really high pollen count that day, there's a windstorm, something like that, when Santa Ana's are really blowing and a lot of stuff is blowing around in the air, those are considered outdoor pollution episodes. So in those instances, you're going to actually want to close your windows. Now, the question is, how the heck do you know if there's an outdoor pollution episode going on, there's no Nixle alert to tell you that there's an outdoor pollution episode like there is with some other things. And that's really where we come into indoor air quality monitoring. So what you want to do, and you'll see there's a gentleman on the call here, Brad Goodwin's from uh, from one of our companies. He's waving. Hey, Brad. Uh, over Brad's shoulder there, thank you for being our model, you'll see uh, an indoor air quality monitor by his company, AWARE. We're going to talk about it in a second. But um, – so, so indoor air quality monitoring is really the missing link, you know, because again, all of the information we're talking about today, you can go on CARB's website, you could read up on this yourself in about 15 to 30 minutes, have a pretty good idea of the difference between one and the other technology and how you, how, how you want to use that for your home or, or business, right? But again, the real silver bullet in all this is, is indoor air quality monitoring. Here at Micron, we're big fans of what we call actionable data. And uh, that's the only way for us to tell, is it doing, we, we say all the time internally, right? Does it do what it says it does? Because how the heck do you measure air quality, which is typically a very qualitative thing, right? You walk around, you know, you take a deep breath, you know, you're down on the pier, it smells awesome, right? You're good to go versus, you know, you're, you know, there's wildfires going on and it's, the air quality is really bad. Um, and, you know, you're outside, you're walking the strand where you kind of feel that like yuck in the air. So the way that you measure that is with an indoor air quality monitor. And there uh, we've tested, I mean, I can't even tell you how many, uh, quite a few <laughs> um, indoor air quality monitors. Some work better than others, uh, but really uh, the kind of the cream of the crop that we found is from a company called AWARE, A-W-A-I-R. And I'm not just saying that because Brad's on the call, but AWARE has, has really risen through the ranks uh, as far as uh, the best of the best in the uh, link that you'll get from Carolina, there is an information sheet that talks about uh, the AWARE Omni. And really when we talk about, you know, indoor air quality monitoring in general, there's a few key metrics that you want to you wanna keep an eye on. The first is you want to talk about, obviously, temperature and humidity. That's a place that's a table skill for most indoor air quality monitors. But the other things that are super important to make sure you're measuring are CO2, VOCs, and also particulate matter 2.5, PM 2.5. Your PM 2.5 count is the number one indicator that something's going on outside that you may or may not be aware of. If your PM 2.5 increases, then that's a surefire way to know that typically there's some type of wildfire, or something to that effect going on. Um, VOCs, VOCs are another, another really strong indicator depending on what's happening internally, you know, in your home. Um, if, you know, for the business owners here, if you've had a day where your housekeepers or your cleaning company or your staff has just cleaned or disinfected your space, you'll always see your VOC shoot up, right? So, but as my old boss used to say, you can't manage what you don't measure. So by measuring, in, the importance of measuring and being aware of indoor air quality has never been more important. And 
just like we, uh, just like it's good to go to Home Depot and buy that air conditioner before that two weeks in August when it gets really hot, um, it's good to take the time now to educate yourself on indoor air quality monitoring. And because once you know what's in the air that you're breathing in, in your home, you can be able to be in the know and, and work with how do you balance in your home indoor versus outdoor air quality, right? Because here in Southern California, you know, 319 days a year, right? It's the best place to live in the world. Unfortunately, there's other days when, again, there are wildfires and certain other things happening beyond our control that make the air quality really bad really quick. And so that is something you do want to be aware of. So these products from Aware are absolutely fantastic. Um, they make products that have a number of different use cases. There are smaller units that you can get for a small home or business that are more app-based. And then there's uh, the Aware Element, which is more a commercial-grade unit. Uh, that's what we use um, the good news is, again, at the end of this call, uh, we have all of these products available for you. So if you have any questions or you want to know much more spe you know, specifically about a product, you can ask myself or any of my team in the breakout sessions, and we can, we can dive into it in detail. So, so we've talked a little bit about the differences between mechanical air filtration, electronic air purification, or air scrubbers. We talk about, again, keeping your windows open, the most important thing if you can, right, ventilation. In an instance where there's some type of outdoor pollution episode, we're monitoring and being aware of that by monitoring our indoor air quality using these products that we've talked about. Now we talk a little bit about UV light. So this is a question we get all the time. Well, can I use UV light? Well, UV light, you know, and you see a thousand products. If your Instagram is half as boring as mine is, it's just littered with products of these small, you know, magic wands that you can get and or a zip bag that you can put your phone in or, you know, all these different products. So the question is, uh, you know, as far as the efficacy of UV light and and how does that work? So the, we take our recommendations, like we said, from from professional trade associations, state regulation, state, you know, state regulating bodies, and also from the CDC, of course, in the EPA. So the CDC has recommended as far as air purification goes, there's a bunch of different methods. UVGI or ultraviolet germicidal irradiation or UVC lights, it's all the same thing. UV disinfection is one of the very few technologies, actually right now the only technology that the CDC has endorsed uh, as far as using that to purify the air. Now, what does that mean? How is it used? So as far as UVC light goes, there are two ways to do it. There is a clinical way to do it, which is how they do it in hospitals, where they bring in a very large piece of equipment. Uh, they seal off that room and they fire that thing up. Uh, we we had a we had a a guy from Texas once try to position the unit he was selling to us as the room nuker. They go in and they nuke the room, you know. And he was an interesting gentleman. But um, but that's effectively what they do. They go in and they blow that thing out. The problem with that is. If it's UVC light, if you're not using it correctly, it can be extremely dangerous. You can't look at it directly at all. It's also subject to shadow lines and things like that, meaning that if the light can't see it, it's not going to disinfect it. So extremely effective in hospitals. The reason that the CDC endorses that technology is because it's been used in hospitals for years. It's been around forever. So they, we know it works, right? So as far as units that use UVGI light, um, we at Micron, our clinical team also would endorse those as well. Our clinical team is made up of five doctors and nurses that specialize in infection prevention and infection control. So they're not just super smart folks because they're doctors. They're super smart folks because they're doctors that specialize in this particular area of study. So again, all the products that we're presenting to you or that we have available for you or anything that we're talking about today has all been reviewed by our clinical advisory team. If it doesn't pass monster from them, we don't use it, point blank. So when they've reviewed a lot of the products that we've put forth too, uh, same thing with them. They said, we're the, most, we're the most comfortable with UVGI, with UVC light, because they've used it in hospitals forever and ever. So yes, it's extremely effective. Now, how are you using that to purify uh, surfaces in the air? Uh, we still do a lot of surface disinfection. It's still the bread and butter of our business. Um, we're doing quite a bit with deep cleans in a lot of different commercial sectors. We do not use UVC light in the surface disinfection business at all. 
If you want to go out and buy one of those little toasters or whatever that you put your phone in that disinfects your phone, the phone soap makes a great unit, knock yourself out. There's no such thing as good germs on surfaces, by the way. That's a misnomer. Um, the health, all the healthy germs and everything you have are in your gut. <laughs> That's, you know, being, you know, being exposed to germs and things like that on surfaces, uh, less is more. Let's put it that way. So if you want to go out and buy one of those, you're not doing yourself a disservice by doing that. As far as using UVC light to disinfect the air, it's a, it's a really delicate balance. So the most effective product we have is we have a ceiling fan that we have, uh, and we're going to be able to sh show that to you shortly, and I'll get, get to that in a second, that has a UVC diode at the top of it. So as it rotates the air in your home or business, it pulls the air over this massive UVC light and disinfects the air that way. So that for us is the, is the recommended way. Um, and they're made by a company called Big Ass Fans, which is a hilarious name, but fantastic company. They've been in business a long time. They sell a lot of fans. They did $21 million in sales last year, just the fans. So they are the absolute industry leaders. We're a proud distributor for those guys. And we're actually going to be opening a showroom in Manhattan Beach um, here in the next week or so. Adam, Seth, that'll be up to Adam, actually, uh, Sarah. But but yeah, we're going to be opening up a showroom here very, very soon, um, and we'll be able to show all these products to you in person. You'll be able to come in, touch and feel, hear the difference between um, – good question, Louis. Yeah, I'll get that in a sec. Um, so you know, you'll be able to touch and feel and do things like that. So as far as the question was, are, are the products UL listed or EPA certified? Really, really, really good question, something that's good to talk about kind of for the group. So the – um, the UL certification. So CARB, the California Air Resource Board, this, this is incredibly important. You don't want, it's actually illegal in the state of California to buy a, an air filter that is not CARB compliant. So uh, I, I don't know, they're not going to come through you in prison or anything, of course, but, but you should be purchasing uh, a, you should be purchasing a unit that is CARB compliant. CARB is based off of two different UL standards. So UL 2998 and UL 867. So Lewis, to answer your question, yes, if it is if it is CARB compliant, it is UL compliant. It must be in order to be CARB compliant. So CARB, the California Air Resource Board, is the golden is the golden ticket for air purifiers in California. So whether when we you know we're, when we're done here today, if I could leave you with one thing, do not buy a unit that's not CARB compliant because you don't know that it meets. Uh, meets all these different criteria that we're talking about. Everything we're talking, off to, talking about today is based off of CARB recommendations. That's also based off of CDC and ASHRAE and EPA recommendations. EPA doesn't certify. Um, the other question was, is the, are these EPA certified? The EPA doesn't certify uh, air, fil air filters. You will see the FDA will occasionally approve certain types of air filters as class two medical devices. Uh, I will say that for the purposes of everyone on this call, unless there's somebody on here from Beach City Health District, it's complete overkill. You don't need it. Uh, if you want to, if you if you're interested in something that is a class two medical device, we have those for you. Um, they are extremely expensive, um, but we've got a really killer unit for you. If you want to spend eight grand, <laughs> come see me. But uh, but it's not it's it's not it's not uh, not certainly not necessary. So um, with that being said, as we kind of transition into um, that, you know, the UVC light in these different technologies. Yeah. And yeah, Scott, your point, a big ass fans is great. I mean, they are, um, they're a really great company. They're just great guys to deal with. They're based in Kentucky. Um, all of their products are made here locally in the U S and we are, we are, they're going to be a big part where Scott will have a big part of their showroom, uh, a part, a big presence in our showroom will be all the different BAF solutions. So you can see that for yourself and, and come see and kind of touch and feel and see the quality. They're not, they're, they are a um, premium grade product. They're not cheap, but as far as here in South Bay too, providing comfort and also be providing disinfection capability, they're really second to none. So lots of different solutions that we can talk through, but uh, you know, as far as UVGI goes, using it in that fan based application is what I would recommend. Uh, also for UVGI, we have a couple of, uh, air scrubbers that have UV diodes within those units. Um, and they are, we have UV diodes that are within those units and those UV diodes uh, are able to disinfect the air as it passes through that there. So 
so as far as that goes, um, something that we're really, really excited about as far as that technology goes. So moving on from there, then uh, as far as infection, so to just kind of go through our bullet points here, we went through the first three. Um, how effective is infection control with the use of UVGI light? We discussed that. So in effect, effective, effective infection control in the workplace and at home. So again, this is something that's incredibly important. So if we have uh, the, you know, the capability to introduce fresh air, we want to go ahead and do that at any point, you know, at every chance we get. But in the, in the event where there is an outdoor pollution episode happening or something to that effect, um, we do want to be able to have uh, some type of recirculating device within the home. Also, there's a metric called air changes per hour. Um, you'll hear that a lot, or CADR rating, clean air delivery rating. We won't go into those too, too much. Um, if you want to do the deep dive, they'll be in the, act, they'll be in the link there. But really, the, uh, the only way to get your uh, air change per hour number to where the, a lot of these, you know, Harvard, uh, Harvard Centers for Public Health, a lot of these places are recommending is to introduce some type of portable air filtration. So with that said, we have a number of different, um, a number of different products that we can use to help get you there. As far as price point goes, that's the number one question we get out of the gate all the time. How much does it cost? Of course. Our products start around $550 and go up to literally as much as you want to spend, depending on the use case. Um, we're in the middle of right now of working with Da Vinci Schools. Uh, da Vinci Schools is a big client of ours, and um, we're introducing the Micron Safe Air program across their entire campus. So they have seven locations through the South Bay, uh, and we're using a combination of uh, literally every, almost everything we sell, <laughs> air, land, and sea, to um, – because they have every, just in that 201 building in, in El Segundo, the, what was Wiseburn is now Da Vinci High School, uh, they have every, almost every possible uh, space, you know, robotics laboratory, a gym, anything you could think of, a CrossFit studio. So it's like a small city over there, as you know, if you've got little ones that go there, if you've been over there. So we're working with them. We're, we're closing in on finalizing that. They have a board meeting tomorrow to, to finalize everything. So we're really, really excited about that. And that will be kind of our, um, our showroom <laughs> but after the showroom, you know, as far as uh, highlighting all the different technologies that we're using there and things of that nature. So, um, so yeah, so with that said, I mean, that covers kind of our general, our general overview section. Um, all, again, the California Air Resource Board's website is going to be your best bet for what they recommend and so on and so forth. Um, as far as the Micron Safe Air website, so our website is microndisinfection.com. That's our homepage. The microndisinfection.com is our uh, kind of microsite that we built. Uh, as, you, as you'll all appreciate as business owners, sometimes making changes to your main website, can it's a, it's a tall task. So we stood up the Micron Safe Air website to be able to uh, highlight what you know what the program is and so on and so forth. Uh, so as far as that goes, definitely check out microsafeair.com. And as far as the, uh, sorry, you're you are correct. Uh, I misspoke a little bit there, Lewis. Uh, yeah, sorry. The EPA, what I said earlier, the, the CDC doesn't um, re doesn't re endorse certain products. The EPA uh, certainly does. So. There are certain products that the EPA will recommend for residential air cleaners and things of that nature. Thank you, Liz. Sorry about that. Um, so the CDC doesn't recommend individual products. They only recommend technologies. The EPA will approve certain products, um, as they've done with disinfectants, right? They have EPA list N. The whole point of EPA list N is to say for the EPA to say, yes, we recommend this particular product. Uh, the CDC does not. So sorry about that, Liz. Um, with that said, uh, what other... Um, what other questions? Uh, or I guess actually, no, sorry. Now we're uh, heading into our breakout rooms, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, love it. A awesome information. Always interesting. And uh, Carolina, um, whoop, we lost Carolina off the video, I think. But there she is. Okay. And I just want to give a shout out. Carolina is the director of communications at the chamber. She is always working behind the scenes, not always visible. But um, she makes all these things um, possible. So thank you, Carolina. Um, okay, so are we ready for breakout rooms? And all of you, if you can stay on, the breakout rooms are fun because you get to ask even more questions, introduce yourself, um, you know, who you are, what your business is. And it's just always a nice way to network too. So I want to thank everybody for joining today. Good conversation um, in the breakout rooms. And uh, Josh, do you have any closing words that you want to leave everybody with or contact information and what have you? Um, yeah, so I will... Um... 
uh, getting out of the call. Uh, so no, thank you so much for your time. I will, um, I think Lewis uh, and Austin, a few, a few of your folks, um, I'll just, I'm gonna drop my cell in the chat here. Um, feel, feel free to call or text anytime. Um, always happy to help. And then, uh, you know, definitely really great to meet all of you guys. I really appreciate your time. It's really fascinating to hear about um, shout out to Scott with ICANN, the work he's doing is awesome. Um, and thank you for, you know, some of our Tim and some of our partners that jumped on. Really cool to hear what Austin's doing with his company, um, TEDx folks. This has been great. Always, Kelly, thanks again. These, these events are always so, so well done. And, you know, we were just talking in our breakout room about how, you know, the Manhattan Beach Chamber just does such a killer job putting these things on and, and getting good participation. So we always appreciate it. Well, thank you. We appreciate you. And I also want to give a shout out to um, Chevron. Chevron is a chairman level uh, circle sponsor and beyond. They are so supportive and they really have stepped up during the pandemic to help us out. And uh, because of support like that, um, it allows us to offer these for free. So, um, you know, Josh, thank you. Your team is amazing. Great information. Uh, Carolina, thank you for all your work behind the scenes and uh, for all of you for attending. That's it.